Hi, I'm communication coach Dan O'Connor, and in this video, you'll learn three ways to tell if people do in fact find you intimidating or arrogant. Oh, my coworkers are, you know, everybody's intimidated by me. I've heard that a lot. I've never met someone who has been correct when they say that. Here are three ways to find out, is it intimidation or arrogance? Okay, number one, do people try and look at you or try and look away from you when they talk to you? And especially look at that compared to how they look at other people. If people tend to look disproportionately uncomfortable when looking at you eye to eye, that does tend to be a sign of intimidation. For example, Maggie and Buddy, my two dogs, Maggie's the alpha, she's in charge, and you can tell because she has a very steel gaze. She will look right at Buddy and he will go into the corner and cry when she does that <laughs> because she's in charge and when she looks at him, she's reinforcing the fact I'm in charge here. So when people are talking to you, you know, and if they're just fidgety and don't really seem to be comfortable, and as they're talking to you, they have trouble looking at you for a long period in time, that's because they don't feel comfortable when they are around you and they don't want that. There's no way that that serves us that people would feel uncomfortable or intimidated by us. I can't think of a way that that would help us, especially in business. Now, if you were, let's say, a, a wrestler, like a female wrestler, or a boxer, like a million dollar baby, I can see where, if that's what you do for a living, intimidation is part of the game, where you want your opponent in battle to feel intimidated when they are with you, because that could give you a leg up in that area if somebody instinctively feels as though you are already ahead of them or above them in the food chain. If you were in a woman's prison, I can see where intimidation could help you survive, unless, of course, you are too intimidating, in which case you run the risk of getting shanked. So again, I can't see many instances where being intimidating is actually going to serve us, but it tends to be those who believe they are intimidating when they're not tend to think that that's somehow a benefit, that that's somehow a, that that is somehow a good thing. It's not a good thing, especially when you consider this. You know, there are two on the spectrum. There are two different ends of the spectrum of human emotion. One is fear. One is love. When somebody is moving to the fear end, they are not expressing themselves. They're not going to be genuine. They're not going to be helpful. They're not going to be communing with us. They are never going to reach their potential, and neither will we if we are with them. And that's not a good thing. Then there are some people, you know, there are some people who, for whatever reason, cause us to feel, or based on how some others behave or how some people act, we do not feel free to be our true loving self. Because that's what we are when we are in our natural state. We are loving people. We love one another. And instead of, we all know what it's like to be around people who make us feel uncomfortable or somehow sliding over to that fear side. Imagine if we worked with people, or if even you, decided to create an environment or have a persona, a vibration that allowed people to express great love and feel free to receive great love all while getting their needs met all at the same time. How about that? How about we did that? How about instead of trying to see who's the most unenlightened bully in the office, we could be in competition to see who's going to be the most loving to one another and create an environment where people feel safe. How about that? For more on that, there's a link in the description below. Check that out. Number two, is there a lot of clarification going on wherever you go at work? When people ask you things a lot like, you know, are you sure you're okay with that? But really, I mean, how do you feel about that? I don't know. I just, I don't, I just don't know that you're really on board with that. Do you, do you really feel like you're on board? If people are in a nervous way asking you, you said that it's okay, but is it really okay? I mean, is it something that you would turn in? When people are asking you questions like that, that's intimidation. You know, they are feeling intimidated. They are feeling unsure, unsafe, not loved, not loving, not good. Now, then there are some people who are asking you a lot for clarification, but the way they do it is more like this. What did you mean by that email that you sent out? Or when you say things, what do you mean by that? Or they say things like, okay, before we leave, I just, I just need to know, Trixie, are you satisfied that you got to say what you needed to say? Is that what you're going to say when we leave here? Now, that's totally different, right? When people are asking you, hey, I don't know who you really are. So what I'm going to do is try to nail you down and make you agree or confirm certain things 
for the record. That's very different, right? So if you find that a lot, that there's a lot of clarification going on, and especially if you are the one clarifying by saying things such as, so does that make sense? I don't know. Does that make sense? And you try to be nice because, you know, sometimes the people just aren't as smart as you are. They're a little incompetent. And so you say things like, maybe it's just me, but, or am I the only one who sees blah, blah, blah? Am I the only one who thinks that? If you're asking people a lot to clarify, is it just me? Does that make sense to you? Am I the only one who thinks that, sees that? Maybe it's just me. If it's just me, it's just me, you know? If you're getting a lot of that from you and you're getting a lot of people clarifying in some way, that's a problem. That should not be happening. Most communicators, especially good communicators, they don't have a lot of clarification issues. So if you are experiencing that, that's a sign. And it tends to be a sign unless you're getting the whole, I don't know, I don't know, what do you feel? What do you feel? Do you really feel that? If that's specifically how they're asking you, that's intimidation. If it's not, it's aggravation because you're arrogant. And number three, do people raise their voice? or lower their voice when they talk to you. Again, instinctively, when we hold a baby, when I'm with my dogs and I want babies or dogs to know, you don't need to be afraid of me. Oh, it's Uncle Dan. Hey, buddy. Hey, Megs. You know, hey, baby. When I want you to know, you don't have to be afraid of me. I'm safe. You can be loving and I'm going to love on you. That's when the voice goes up. All right. All right. Who did that? Who opened the fridge and ate all the butter? Maggie. That's when our voice goes down. And that's, again, natural. When we're talking to our kids, you know, we might be really friendly with our kids most of the time. Hey, both of you get in here. That's when the voice goes down, when we are not intimidated or afraid, but we are showing dominance. So you want to notice when people are talking to other people, where is their tone compared to when they talk to you? So we want to watch those three basic things. And you want to watch what you're saying to people and what people say to you. For example, do you find yourself describing people at work using the word incompetent? Because if you do, that I will tell you is the number one sign that you are not in fact intimidating, but people see you as arrogant and you're aggravating. And if you use the word incompetent when you describe your coworkers, that's just a symptom of a big problem. And I'll tell you other things that are happening. If you use the word incompetent to to describe people, even if it's just to yourself and you've never really said it out loud, if you believe others to be incompetent, you're missing out and that's not working for you. Because what that means is you're not able to see people for what they really are. You're not able to see through the facts to the truth. Because there's a big difference between facts and truth. There might be people with whom you work that truly are not as capable as you are or don't have the same skill level as you do in your field. That might be a fact. The truth is, that's not what it's all about. And if you don't know that yet, you're going to run into some hard lessons and I want more for you than that. I do. Because what happens is, when it comes right down to it, when I'm working with people, whether I believe them to be on my level or above me or beneath me in terms of their skill level, the truth is we are all going to the same place and we are all the same stuff. When I speak to you, am I speaking to the illusion that I have created, the persona that I have created when I speak to you? Am I honoring myself by allowing myself to truly see you and speak from what's real in me to what's real in you? Because you know how, you know, the fact is I'm a human being and I'm sitting here in front of my computer and I'm a solid object, you're a solid object, this table is a solid object, this microphone is a solid object, that's all facts. The truth of the matter is, it's all empty space made up of little molecules moving so quickly they give the illusion of being solid objects. But it's just a, you know, little tiny particles, most of what we, now we all know this, most of what we look at, feel, touch, see, there's nothing there. There's a tiny bit of matter that's moving around so quickly it gives the illusion of being solid objects. But there's something that holds that matter together. There's something between my atoms and molecules that holds me together. Because basically, you and I, we're just the same stuff. It's very difficult when it comes right down to it to see where I end and you begin on a quantum level when it when you get right down to it. And what holds me together, what holds these atoms and molecules are, uh, together in me, What holds us together and keeps us from falling apart is love. That's what I call it, that energy that keeps us solid. You know, at the moment, the moment we die and whatever it is that's holding us together leaves, 
we start to break down immediately, instantly. We start to lose it. We fall to pieces. It is truly, as the great Captain and Tennille declared, love that keeps us together. And what happens is, what happens is, if I don't recognize what's really going on here, just, you know, in fleeting moments even, if I don't recognize that you're more than just your, what I perceive to be your skill level, you're more than that. You are this, you're made up of the same love that I am. If I don't speak to that, I'm missing out. I'm, I'm missing the whole point here. I'm letting the facts get in the way of the truth. The truth is that you and I are brothers and sisters, and I'm here to commune with you. And the love in me is here to commune with the love in you. It can't do that if you don't feel loved. And now you know if you're with me that really it's love what's missing in the workplace more than anything else. Hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell and join me in transforming the global dialogue one conversation at a time, okay? Hit the subscribe and notification bell button so that we can do that and actually make a change. That's what we're here to do. If I'm making you feel intimidated, that is the opposite end of the communication continuum. Love is over here. Fear is over there. When you are intimidating to other people, if that is in fact what you are, that is pushing people to the fear side of the spectrum, which is polar opposite from love. Any step you take towards fear is a step you take away from love. That's a step you take away from the truth. That's a step you take away from the reason you and I are here to begin with. And I might let facts get in the way of that truth sometimes and think that I'm here for my job. I'm not. That's why I'm here. And we forget that. How about this? Maybe when you're at work, for example, if it has gotten to a point where there are some people where it's, you, don't, you don't believe that you can salvage that relationship because it's, you know, it's one of those that you've already chalked up. There's no going back there. We don't see eye to eye. We never will. You've said things about me. I've said things about you. I don't like you. You don't like me. Let's just leave it at that. How about we let all of those facts stop getting in the way of the truth? And here's an exercise for you the next time you go into work or you go any place. This is a great exercise for you to start seeing the truth of other people. There are different levels of really communing with other people. And silent, I'd like you silently to say to yourself the next time you go into work, when you look at other people, say to them, say to yourself, okay, I know that what's keeping me together here, I know that, you know, you can call it whatever you want, the universal force, the Buddha mind, the, the Christ, spirit of Christ, the Trinity, whatever it may be, the God, the universe, your power, your maker, energy, love, I call it love. The love that is in me recognizes the love that is in you. That's all I'm going to do today. I'm going to recognize the love that's in me, recognizes the love that's in you. I'm speaking to you from that level. I'm, I'm trying to commune with you on that level. All I want to do is state for the record, the love that's within me recognizes the love that's within you. The power that's in me but not of me recognizes the power that's in you but not of you. That's all I want to do. That's one step. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. And then you might take another step and say, you know, okay, now we've already established that I recognize that. Now I'm going to say hello. <laughs> you know, I'm going to salute the love that's in you. The love that's within me salutes the love that's in you. I don't need to tell you. I don't need to make a sign. I just need to say it. I need to acknowledge it and say the love that's within me salutes the love that's within you. When you little by little by little start to recognize, salute, and commune with the love in other people, and not from you, you know, not, not from the fact of who you are, but from the truth of who you are, that truth that dwells within me, acknowledges, salutes, recognizes, communes with, and says hello to the, the love that's within you, you will have a whole different experience because that is truth talking now. When that happens, there's no going back. You start to realize there's love pouring out everywhere I go. And if you are instead of communing with that and encouraging people to feel safe and loved when they are with you, if you're not doing that, and you're not, if you somehow feel it's okay to be intimidating, or somehow feel as though you're giving off the intimidating vibe, you're really missing out, and I want more than that for you. So try doing that one simple exercise, and you will see how just doing that will totally change the experience you have. And doing that will bring you back to the truth of the continuum 
where you are in your natural state. Your natural state is to feel great love and to be comfortable being loving and speaking loving words to people. There's nothing that you have to say that you can't say in a loving way. Nothing. And I say that because I've seen it all said, and I've seen it all said in a loving way. And it's it brings me to my knees when I can see people with that command of not language, but of communication, where they can, no matter what the situation is, they can express themselves and say what they have to say in a loving way. If you focus on doing that, it pulls you so far from that fear side of the spectrum. There's no way you can be intimidating to people because that's genuine and that's authentic and people recognize it and it speaks to people. And what happens is when I speak to you on that level, when I'm speaking to you not from a business standpoint, I'm not competing with you, I'm not testing you, I don't want to show you anything. All I'm doing is speaking to you on a different level, a level of spirit. I'm saying to you, you and I have been brought here today for a very special reason, and we're made up of something really special. And the most special part of me that's holding me together when I would otherwise fall apart is acknowledging and saluting and recognizing that same part of you that we both share that's in us, but not of us. That's what I'm going to focus on speaking to first. And if you can do that, everything else falls into place. Because if you don't have any of that, like if, if that's not even crossed your mind, you have been brought into HR. And HR has while they're reviewing you and talking about things and how are things going, yes, you know, you're, you know, you're absolutely excellent in your skill set. You really know your job. You know, there's some room for improvement in terms of communication and teamwork. If you have been told that by HR, if you have been told that it is communication, team building, teamwork, working well with others, things like that, if, if you have been told that there's some room for improvement there, you could, you could work on that. That's your first warning. Six months is what you get. I will tell you that in six months, if you don't take drastic measures, you will be, instead of thinking that people are intimidated by you, you will, you won't be thinking about if people are intimidated or not by you because you will be unfortunately looking for new employment and the cycle can either continue or you can see why you're really there. And it's not whatever you think it is. If you think you're intimidating, you're really there to commune and salute the love in other people. You know, how about that? How about that? Try that. <laughs> you know, how about if people really did that and went out of their way, made an effort, you know, didn't go, didn't make a huge effort, didn't go nuts, but were conscious about instead of wanting other people to compete, to be professional, to be industry leaders, to be go getters, what about if people encouraged other people around them to be loved and to be loving with one another? first. How about that? How about that? Imagine if you were part of that, and actually that is what you are part of, so try doing that. Or if you have been told, you know, some people say that they have trouble working with you. If you've been told that and that you could work on your communication skills, and if you have the trifecta of... You know, sometimes your emails can be misinterpreted by other people. That's the trifecta. You have 30 days. Or if, for example, you're on a team with people, you're working with them, you think everything's fine, you tend to work more independently and you just try to get your work done. And, you know, as long as everybody gets their work done, who really cares? We're not here to be friends. And then you come into work and, oh, well, wait a minute, I'm not on that team anymore. I thought, I, I wait a minute, I, I'm working a, a, a different team or alone. Those are huge signs, okay? Not of intimidation, but of but of you're about to be fired. And if that's happening, I, as a friend, am telling you why. It's because you want to focus on other things than what you're focusing on. There are a lot of people who can do your job. But if you can do your job and be loving to the people with whom you work, you know, don't be afraid of whether this could be a sign of weakness if you're a woman doing this, or if you need to look this way in front of the men to get ahead. Remember that the opposite of weakness is not strength. The opposite of weakness is love. It is. And if you can show that you have more love than anybody else, you know, if you work on your loving muscles, because it's just like anything else, you work on it, you practice it, you practice being loving. 
If you do that, there is no stopping you. There is no stopping where you will go. And it all comes down to recognizing why you're really here. And you're here to salute the love in other people. Now, if you get what I'm saying, please share this on places like Facebook and Twitter and other places that people may go to get information like this because we need everybody who might get it to get it and join us, okay? Another thing that I know people have a tough time with in this process of really realizing why we're here is forgiveness. It's not easy to recognize, you just don't like me? Hmm. If you have trouble forgiving people at work for being incompetent, whatever it may be, if you have trouble forgiving yourself, check out this video on forgiveness. That'll really help. I hope to see you in there. And I hope to see you in the seminar that I mentioned in the description below. So check that out as well. This is Dan O'Connor reminding you, whatever you have to say, you can say it in a loving way. And if you need any help with that, that's what we are all here for. So make sure to join us again. I'll see you soon.